Today, we are thrilled to announce that Ithaca College and SUNY Cortland will play the 2019 Cortica Jug football game at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. I believe the conversation had started well beyond that with, um, with Susan Bassett and Mark Kudak and President Coyado. I'm not exactly sure how much earlier than when I found out, but obviously it had been discussed for, for some time before it really started gaining some traction. Uh, I don't think I'll ever forget that day, honestly. And we had heard there was going to be a big announcement. We had our inside sources, and by inside source, I mean other students that were working with them. Um, and all we knew is that there was going to be a big announcement and that it might be in a neutral field. And I don't think I reacted at first. Um, ben and I both just sat there and went, did they just say MetLife? And then it struck us. They were like, oh, we're about to play or we're about to broadcast. They're about to play in an NFL stadium. I was assistant sports editor at the Ithacan at the time. And I was walking from an interview and I saw the news that the 2019 Met the Cortica jug would be played at MetLife Stadium. And I sprinted into the office and I wrote, I actually wrote the Ithacan's breaking news update about that. Originally, my father, uh, Bobby Grone, was on, you know, in the decision-making process and everything. So I actually found out a year ahead, but I couldn't say anything. It was supposed to be at Yankee Stadium, got switched to MetLife. But when it got announced to the team, it was unbelievable. It was like Christmas morning. The team, everyone went wild. We were in a meeting. It was just, you know, an unbelievable surprise and, you know, led to an un unbelievable ex uh, experience. Excitement and uh, just overall, I think, shock that a college football game in this area was going to be played in an NFL stadium that holds over 80,000 fans. When it was announced that the 2019 Cortica Jug would be played at MetLife Stadium, the reaction was one filled with excitement, disbelief, and sheer joy. The childhood dream of competing in front of a packed NFL stadium was about to come true. At the time, both Ithaca and Cortland were undefeated, making the inevitable showdown one for the ages. With two months left to play, the Bombers had plenty of work to take care of. Following a victory over St. John Fisher, the Bombers entered their second season of Liberty League play with the stakes higher than ever. The Liberty League's very good, and there's a lot of good football teams, and you know, it's a, um, that's part of the preparation as you, you you embark on a challenge. Each week's kind of its own challenge as you continue to work, you know, with the, um, trying to put a great plan together and trying to go 1-0 and each week. So when you play for Ithaca College, there's always that target on their back. No matter who you play, what week it is, it doesn't matter your record or their record, they're always going to bring their A game. So that's the kind of mindset that, you know, we try to tell the younger guys to have because being a bomber, everybody wants to beat us. You know, that, that mentality and now someone's coming for our spot. You know, if you get, if you get comfortable, if you, you know, let up and, you know, don't stay on the throttle during the week, you know, in your preparation, that things are gonna get taken away from you. And and we looked at it that way. We said, all right, we're gonna have to prepare harder now, guys. Are, all these teams are gonna know what we're doing. They're gonna know our game plan. So now we gotta make it so hard for them to, to counter, you know, what we have coming on Saturdays. And we gotta make it so strong that they can't beat us. If you wanna be the program and the team that you wanna be, or that we want to be as a program, um, and what we've been in the past. I think uh, I, I think that's just kind of part of the deal with with being Ithaca football. You know, I think people are always going to bring their best. They're going to play their best against us, and um, they're 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 going to be fired up to, to come in every single week. And and um, and we have to understand that as a program, and we have to kind of match that energy week in and week out. I think we made some adjustments, but each and every week, no matter it's the first two games, game three, game four, like when you go watch the film with your individual coach or, or you watch it in a, in a group with some of the defensive guys, whether that's the, the D line, the linebackers, there's always things you can improve, you know, we, we were just happy to get a win, but you can always get better at anything you could do. The Bombers now turn their attention to the Liberty League as they open conference play against the St. Lawrence Saints. 
Well, let's not forget, too, that decision-making was an issue for Joe Germanario last week that Coach Swanstrom wasn't too happy about mm-hmm. when he threw two interceptions. But I think maybe that decision-making doesn't always necessarily only affect those young guys. I mean, Germanario's is experienced as they come here in this league, and, I mean, th- there w- that was even a question last week. Well, just like you said, this is a St. Lawrence team that is going to throw the ball, and then they're going to throw the ball some more, and then guess what? They're going to throw the ball again. It's going to be a real team effort. I mean, all the corners for Ithaca are going to get involved. Groshot will line up in the empty set again, so we'll see if the Bombers send pressure. Got Nick Garone lined up in the defensive line spot. Three receivers to the right. Here's Groshot on the snap. Over the middle, intercepted by Nick Garone at the 30-yard line. Germanario takes it, the sneak on the right side, and did he get in this time? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Bombers. Joe Germanario on the QB sneak off the right side makes it 16-6. Now Germanario to give up the middle to DeHaiti. DeHaiti cut it through, and DeHaiti into the end zone. For a touchdown. Basically unblocked off the line, and then he just had to jump over the defender at the goal line. Bombers 23, Saints 6. Now the throw over to Gladney. There is his sixth reception. Gladney jumps over a defender, and touchdown Will Gladney. Number two in the half. Will Gladney just became the first bomber ever with 200 catches. And it's only fitting that it should come on a touchdown. Bombers 30, Saints 6. Here's Germanario waiting for the snap. 10 on the on the play clock. Germanario now takes it, fakes the run. Looking over on the side, finds Hedgeland. Hedgeland going for the end zone. Hedgeland is in for a touchdown. Touchdown throw number three for Joe Germanario, the first of the half, not to someone named Will Gladney. Austin Hedgeland makes this one 37-6. Out of the timeout, five wide for the Saints. 25 seconds to go, 10 on the play clock bomber showing blitz at the 36 yard line first and 10 here is Groshot passing looking right all the way and intercepted interception by the bombers there's Mikey Rumas at the 40 at the 30 at the 20 no one's gonna catch him pick six bombers Mikey Rumas interception number four of the half for this Ithaca defense this one he takes to the house zeros on the clock and another W for the Bombers, 59-20. Setting the tone early in conference play, Ithaca moved to 4-0 on the season. Accompanying the win was another bump in the national rankings as the South Hill squad inched up to number 10 in the nation. Last week was close, this one not so much. Were you surprised to see that it was so close? Jackson, start with you. Yeah, I'm going to say it was kind of a uh, pleasant surprise for me. I knew St. John Fisher coming back last week might have been a little tough for the secondary, but I was really impressed. I'm not really surprised by the fact that they came out and put up so many points. We know the offense is good, and this was just a bounce-back game for this team after a game against uh, St. John Fisher that they kind of came out and were a little bit slow in the second half. Yeah, I mean, all wins are big, but conference wins are... Um, very important, you know, the two. No no conference game is more important than the other. Even the only reason um, you're able to play important games at the end of the year is you handled your business early in the year. So, you know, um, beating St. Lawrence was, was crucial to getting off to a great start. You know, at that point, you start looking and you're like, okay, you know, you're beating the teams you have to beat and you're beating them convincingly. This is a good sign for Bombers team. Well, this talented Bombers team seemed on the path to a potential postseason run, they were not alone. Union College had yet to drop a game, while RPI and Hobart had only dropped one. Though it was still early in the season, these teams were growing blips on the radar. Starting off with RPI, they are hot. Now three, now on a three-game winning streak after their blow, blowout against Rochester 38-0. And they took their home field advantage to heart as they picked up 24 points in just the second quarter alone. Yeah, I got to say, RPI is the team we have to circle on the calendar. They played them a week before the Cortica game. It's the team that hasn't been ab- Ithaca hasn't been able to beat the last two seasons since joining the league has all the makings for a classic trap game before that huge way to end the regular season. you got to look at Hobart. They're ranked number 21 in the country this week, and RPI didn't even get any votes, and neither did Union. So I think Hobart, you really look at their run defense and their running game as well, and it's going to be tough for Ithaca to really to get anything going if they're not going to pass. Hobart's defense has been steamrolling teams, and it seems like that's not going to stop anytime soon. Union is a team that averages 230 passing yards a game. 
and I think uh, maybe not weak, but inexperienced secondary, I think they're going to be able to expose Ithaca a little bit, and we got to watch out for that. Union remains undefeated at 2-0 and in conference. Up next, Hobart and RPI. It's been crucial this year. Every single game is going to be really, really important in the Liberty League. You have Hobart, you have Union, you have, of course, Ithaca and RPI. Those four are really going to be competing for that one top spot, so every loss is going to take your team's chances. It's going to give. You, it's going to take them down. It's going to be a huge blow. Uh, this is going to be the toughest part of the season, obviously, for the Bombers. Four of their next six games are against teams that I either uh, received votes or have been in the top 25 so far this season. So it's, it's going to be hit or miss. They can either move up big or they can drop down. This 2019 season, at least early on, is shaping up to be special for Ithaca. So Joe Germanario gets a chance for the first time today to produce something for this Ithaca offense who is averaging 45 points this a guy, game. This he's, guy, he's the real deal. He's really just had an epic season for Ithaca. This is offense. a historically great Bombers offense. Of course, we knew what Joe Germanario was coming into this game, but the way he's connected with his receivers, which is no easy feat, has been really impressive. This Ithaca core of wide receivers has been making plays all season I think that trio long. of receivers is just a little too strong for every other passing defense in the conference. I think that you know if it's not broke, don't fix it. And that is going to do it here from Butterfield Stadium. The Ithaca College Bombers lead this one from start to finish. Not still sure of how dominant Ithaca has been as of lately. Ithaca has not lost a Liberty League game in over a calendar year, dating back to a 24 0 win over Union College on October 13th of 2018. In that Liberty League game span, Ithaca's average margin of victory, 26.4 points. You've been busy all day and then missing this Bombers game today. They've been all over the Hobart State. They had the offense rolling from the gecko this year, and now the defense, they're starting to get going. They're starting to get their Off mojo. Dragged down, John Haddock and Noah Hill combining on the sack. You have to take a look at this defense. Back-to-back -back shutouts. It's been an absolute monster week, a couple of weeks for the defense. A monster month for the defense. Ithaca College is playing great football right now. Gotta love to see it. It's now been seven quarters in a row that the Ithaca defense hasn't allowed a touchdown. It's an impressive defense because everybody is, is chipping in. They know their strengths and they're playing to their strengths here early in the season. Bombers lead wire to wire. They take this one 59 to nothing. If there's any team for Ithaca that was going to put it together, it was this one. And it looked like they had the opportunity. They look, it looks like they have that it factor that you really need if you're a playoff team. Ranked number eight in the d3football.com weekly poll, ranked number seven in the AFCA poll. This is the highest ranking they've had since 2006. This will take a very well-rounded football team uh, to take care of it. Ithaca literally is playing the best football of the year at the right time. You can't ask for anything else, and moving forward, this team looks very, very lethal. While the Bombers extended their undefeated record to 7-0, the athletic department was breaking records of its own. Cortica, of course, will be played at MetLife Stadium in an attempt to break the D3 single game attendance record, and our very own Steve Durr got to take a closer look at how that's going so far. Thanks, Matthias. I'm Steve Durr, reporting for the Great Eye Report here at Jim Butterfield Stadium. The 61st edition of the Cortica Jug has broken the ticket sales record at 39,000 tickets, and it could be way more. As ticket sales went on, as you know, the, the business school started doing more promotions and everyone really started to, you know, pick up the excitement for it. It ended up kind of being one of the only storylines around the team. Well, if they're gonna do ticket distribution and sales, why, why, don't, why don't we do it? I redeveloped the sport marketing class and we focused uh, our marketing plan on Cortica um, in terms of giving ideas. And they were the students, our, our, the sport marketing class, uh, pretty much were the most involved students, I would say, in terms of giving feedback and ideas that were implemented. My students and the, and the students on that team had more, had more experience collectively working in ticket sales than the majority of professional staff on campus. I believe they achieved their goal pretty early on. I think it might have been before the 2018-19 school year was over. If not, it was very soon into the 2019-20 season. And I was not surprised because you could see the alumni response was out of this world. Ithaca College needs to find ways to connect alumni and get alumni back and get alumni excited. And that's what the, the Cortico is about. Everyone knew the excitement that was building up and it was 
it was starting to, instead of be a steady increase, kind of get exponential. We like to preach that, you know, Cortica is just another game. So we just treated it that way and went into it that way. You can sense all the players, you know, up to those weeks, they were saying, we're excited, but we got to stay focused. We got to stay focused. And I half believe them and I half don't. The Bombers had bigger things to focus on than attendance records, however. The nationally ranked Union Dutchmen were coming to town in a battle for the Liberty League title. I think that guys started realizing how good we we were becoming and how good we could be. And I don't want to say guys got cocky, but guys knew that we were good, but we also had to prepare at the way that, you know, we were we were performing. It was like, all right, you know, we got something going for us and we can't let off the throttle. Otherwise, you know, it's going to get taken away. I thought we were playing good football. You know, we played really good football. I mean, um, you know, we were averaging a, a bunch of points. We were playing pretty good defense. We were starting a bunch of sophomores um, and we were getting better as we were going. And, uh, you know, we were, we, were, we were doing a lot of positive things. Unequivocally, the team was improving. St. Vincent College, blowout. Alfred, domination. St. John Fisher, barely held on. St. Lawrence, blowout. Buffalo State, blowout. Hobart and Rochester, back-to-back -back shutout. They were on pace to be the highest scoring Ithaca offense. So it was kind of a good place to be for us as we didn't really think we were playing our best football, but um, you know, you're winning and you're winning with a lot to work on. And if you were feeling good after the St. Lawrence game, you can imagine how they were feeling after Hobart. They were saying, yeah, this is our year. We're, we got this in the bag. Welcome into the Bombers Live pregame show. I'm your host, Tara Lynch. We are gearing up for the Ithaca Bombers, hosting the Union Dutchman on Senior Day here on the South Hill. Now, both of these teams today enter the game ranked in the top 25 by D3Football.com. So let's dig in to this matchup. Last week, the Bombers were absolutely dominant in their win over the Yellow Jackets. This week, though, it's arguably their toughest game of the season. We've talked about it all season long. So what are the stakes of this matchup? Two things, Tara. Liberty League title on the line and a trip to the NCAA tournament. History-wise, Ithaca has dominated Union, but I think it's going to be close throughout the first half. Yeah, there's a couple battles today that I, I truly have question marks around because I don't know at the end of the day who's going to win. Union has to come in with the mentality that they're the underdog, which they are. They're fired up and they have to think of this as a great opportunity for their players, their coaching staff, and the rest of their program going forward. The only thing you can say is strap yourselves in. We're in for a ride. Big crowd here at Butterfield Stadium for Senior Day and the de facto Liberty League Conference Championship. Mm, this is a great start to the drive for Union. This is what you want. Let your offense first come down. to you. Run at Union. your own pace. You got the three and out from the first drive from Ithaca. Now Union is controlling the pace of this game, doing exactly what they want to do on offense. Dre Ross Jr. on the near side. Watch a fade there. That's what they're going to throw. The pass up and complete. No signal yet. And the arms go up, so a Union touchdown there. Mario drops back now, going to throw it outside. And a breaking a tackle, getting some space. Vito down the right sideline. Nobody's going to catch Andrew Vito to the 20-yard line, to the 10. Touchdown, Bombers. Andrew Vito breaking tackles and sprinting away from the Union defense. Just like that, Ithaca scores. It's about to be 7-7. Shotgun snap to German area, play fake. Bounce around in the pocket, pump fakes. Germanario airs it down the field and this is gonna be picked off by the Dutchman. Gonna come down the near sideline and be forced out of bounds. That's Joe Vanderhoof with the pick, his fourth of the season. We're not used to seeing Germanario make those mistakes. He's made a couple of poor throws this game so far. We were wondering what we would see coming into this game. Two great offenses and two great defenses. Right now a defensive battle. This drive looking a lot better for Ithaca, a lot more comfortable on offense. Quick snap from German Ario. He's going to try to sneak it. Ithaca celebrating, and the arms go up. Touchdown, Bombers. 17 plays, 93 yards, ending with the one yard Joe German Ario sneak, his fourth rushing touchdown this season. Two receivers to the left side. Handoff is the Erebor. Erebor hit behind the line, bounces it back out to the left side, stepping out to the pylon. Touchdown, Union. The 
Dutchman able to score a quick drive. This Ithaca team is not used to playing from behind. It's going to be interesting to see how they adjust because this is an inexperienced team coming into this game, into the season, excuse me, a lot of sophomores and juniors starting. See how they respond to adversity here. The Bombers rounded out the first half in unfamiliar territory, finding themselves trailing for the first time all season. The Dutchman held a slim three-point lead, which meant the 1-2 battle would rage on in the second half. Rodriguez lines up for the field goal. He's one for one today and five for six on the season. It's up and no good. He yanked it left. Missed it left. A missed opportunity for the Union College Dutchman. It stays a three-point game here. The Bombers trail 17-14, 6-20 to go in the third quarter. Well, both teams have had their share of missed opportunities, but it's going to come down to which team can take advantage of that. And a big call here for the Bombers. German Arrow running up to the line of scrimmage. He fumbles the snap. German Arrow knocked back. Turnover on downs. Poorly executed quarterback sneak. Joe German Arrow fumbled the snap. And Union takes over on downs. That is something you cannot do if you're this Ithaca offense. The snap back looking to his left, trying to get it away. Throws it to Vito. Touchdown, Bombers. Andrew Vito's second re touchdown reception of the day. And that's a big one as it pulls the Bombers within one possession with 3.16 to play. Second straight season, the Bombers have been clashing for the Liberty League title, and it has come down to the last second. Butterfield Stadium crowd getting loud, stomping on those bleachers. The snap, handoff to Erebor. Erebor looking to bounce it out to the right-hand side. And he will, and he's got space. If he can make it to the end zone, this might be it. He will, six points, Dutchman. Touchdown Union, and that will do it. I.K. Erebor sprints untouched for a 40-yard touchdown to crush the hopes of Ithaca's undefeated season. Union is going to get the automatic bid into the tournament. Third down, 42 seconds to play as German Era takes a snap and then fumbles it. Well, falling on by Vincent DeCaterino, and that will do it. Another turnover for this Ithaca offense, the fourth of the day by Joe Germanario. Two interceptions, two fumbles, and there's a mass exodus from Butterfield Stadium. The clock officially hits zero, and that will be it. The Bombers fall to Union 31 to 21. A bit of a shocking result to us, at least, uh, from our original predictions, but what does this say about the Union team coming into Jim Butterfield Stadium and remaining undefeated? It showed how resilient they were, and it showed that they were not going to leave this stadium today without a fight, and they brought the fight to the Bombers. You know what it showed me? It showed me that, Ithic, that Union, excuse me, game planned really well today. They were the more disciplined team. They didn't make as many mistakes. You just had Our to play your best football league. coming into this game. Ithaca did not play that today. With the winning streak over and NCAA chances now slim, the Bombers knew they had to regroup for an equally important matchup against their emerging rivals, the RPI Engineers. I think it's an Ithaca team that uh, was easily distracted by what was ahead. It was RPI. That was the team at the top to beat. Um, and that's the team that the Bombers always had their eye on. Um, in 2018, uh, they lost a heartbreaker to RPI. And you kind of felt the bad blood between Ithaca and RPI start boiling up. Down just short of the goal line and RPI is going to have the win. We're, we're coming for blood, you know, because Union, we always, you know, Union and, and uh, RPI, it's always tough games, you know, and RPI losing to them two years in a row. It was like, we got to, we got to go get these guys. We're playing them on their turf. We want to go, you know, stick it to them. How can Ithaca beat RPI for the first time in your tenure with the Bombers? Uh, just, we got to play well. Um, got to play well. And uh, in all phases, it's... Uh, there's, there's no way and nowhere for us to get away with, with a lot of mistakes on either side of the ball. And they're, they're a team that capitalizes in the kicking game at a very high level. So um, we got to just be good in all three phases of the game. And um, we know we're getting a tough opponent on Saturday that's played us tough um, since I've been here. And um, we're excited about the competition. We're excited about going on the road. And uh, I can't wait to compete on Saturday. 
I'm just so excited for this game because I, I want to see how this Ithaca team responds when they're in a position where they haven't been all season. I think there's going to be a, a question asked now by Turper to his senior leaders, Garone and Haddock. Basically, you guys are on your final licks here. What what more can you give me? So from the gates, I think the, I, I think the defense is going to be asked. Basically, you get us a stop. You get Germanary out there. You let him get comfortable and go from there. Shotgun snap. Marinopolis looking to pass. Over the middle of the field. Hits Mark Meislin inside the 10-yard line, inside the 5, reaching for the pylon. Touchdown RPI. Mark Meislin breaks a tackle and stretches for the pylon, and the engineers strike first. Lombardi stays in the game at quarterback. He takes a snap, sprinting to the left. Lombardi looking for the pylon. He's got it. Touchdown engineers. Peter Lombardi out of the Wildcat formation takes the direct snap off behind the left tackle, Luke Koschel. And the engineers are up two scores. Clifford off the right side. Gets leveled at the 35-yard line. RPI is saying that they've got the ball. No signal. And it's RPI ball. George Marinopoulos, the quarterback, out of the shotgun. He's got the snap. Hand off to Munoz Watts. Watts hitting the backfield, avoids the contact, reaches for the pylon. And he's in. Touchdown, RPI. This Bombers defense has been stunned in this first quarter with 3.05 to play. Ithaca trails RPI 20-0 on the verge of 21-0 if Christian can convert. Shotgun snap to Joe Germanario looking to pass. Pressure coming, brought down in the backfield. Sacked by Magnus Womble. That is just about as bad of a drive as you can have if you're the Bombers. First drive, you throw an interception. Second drive when your defense needs to take a breather because they have been on the field for nine minutes already of this first quarter. And that will do it for this one. The Ithaca College Bombers fall for the second straight week, 38-12 at the hands of the RPI engineers. Yeah, I don't know if I've really ever felt um, a football team kind of deflated as much as we were. It, it was really hard to keep the the team focused within that 24-hour rule and to, to move on to the next opponent. Um, and, uh, and RPI certainly had the ability to take advantage of that um, as we – um, as a team, as coaches, um, we're not prepared to play that game. I also think that our team, you know, we were starting to, I don't want to say burnt, burn out, but we were getting tired. You know, it was a long season. We had our bye week, week two. So we didn't have a break for seven weeks, you know, and we were playing some tough, hard-nosed football, you know, and I think that caught up to us a little bit. The fact that you go six, seven weeks straight with no bye week and playing football and the toughest and most intense games down the stretch knowing that you're going to play Cortica at MetLife I can see how that could be a little bit distracting or exhausting like it definitely you know it, it stunk and it, it stung for all of us right with those those back-to-back -back losses and I don't think we put our best foot forward and you know I'll say uh you know coming back after getting uh kind of just getting the heart ripped out a little bit and just those back-to-back -back losses it didn't sit well for any of us Last three weeks of the season were ended up being the only games that really mattered in Union, RPI, and Cortica. You know, we got to do a better job handling losses. We got to do a better job of refocusing our goals and um, getting focused on, on the task in front of us instead of letting the game beat us twice. Two consecutive defeats eliminated any playoff aspirations the Bombers had fought for all season, yet the biggest stage ever in Division Three football was just seven days away. Until that point, Cortica 2019 had been all hype. Now, it was becoming a reality.